the first thing you need to be able to do for um, for the exam is to do some binary conversions. And I, I mean, most of you guys are really good at this anyway, so I don't think this will be a big deal. So the first thing we need to think about is the fact that binary is a base two system. So that means there are two symbols and those symbols are naught and one. So they're the only symbols that you can put in uh, to a column in binary. So denary, sometimes called decimal, is a base 10 system. And as you know, you've got ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. So you can put any number between zero and nine into the columns on a base 10 number system on decimal. This is the numbers you've been using um, kind of for most of your life, really. So if I wanted to represent 21, I'm saying that that's two tens and one single unit, 21. If I wanted to represent that same 21 in binary, then just like I've got zero here in the thousands column and zero in the hundreds column, I'm just going to start on this side and say that, that there are no 128s or 64s or 32s that actually go into 21. But 16 does. So I can have a 16 and that's going to leave me five left. So if I wanted to do it formally, I could just do the takeaway sum and say that I've got five left. So there are no eights that go into five, but there is a four and I've taken four away and now I've got one. And so there's no twos in that, but there is a one. And so my binary representation for 21 is zero, 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 one, zero, one, zero, one. So we might need to convert a binary number back into a decimal number. So the way we can do this is just if we put the uh, the headings at the top, that really helps. So remember in binary, we've got ones, twos, fours, eights, sixteens, thirty twos, sixty fours, 128. So we are just these powers of two. We're just putting those numbers in there at the top. So then what we're looking for is ones because this will say one times 32 plus one times eight plus one times four. And if we add that up, we get 32 and eight and four which is 44 and so that first number is 44 then the second one we've got 32 we've got 16 we've got two and we've got one so we add those together 32 16 2 and 1 and we get 51. now it's worth noticing that if you've got a binary number that's got a one on this end that's going to mean it's an odd number because it's the only way you can have an odd number is to have one in this one column. So that's something else you can look at just to uh, when you're looking at the binary number. If you've if you've ended up with an odd number um, when there's a naught in this column, then you must have made a bit of a mistake. So you have to go back and have a look. So adding the numbers together, sometimes we can add binary numbers together. Now, I've done these in. Uh, base 10, but I can add in binary. I don't need to worry about those numbers. So if I say zero plus one, well, that's obviously one and one I can put in my column because I can put zero or one in each column. So I've got one here, zero and one is again one, one and zero is again one, one and zero is one, zero and one is, well, it's one and two ones is a two now i can't write down a two but i can write a zero here and carry a one because the pattern for um two in binary is one zero so i'm carrying my one and i've got noughts here but there's the one i've carried and i've added my numbers together so easy enough to add together binary numbers if you've got something you can put in the column like a one or a zero that's fine if you've got a two you need to do a carry because you can't write two in there so if we work uh, all this one out we, we will come up with the same answer as if we added these together now what about if we have to add more numbers than that so i could try adding all three of these numbers together so i'm going to try adding these numbers together um, and so i've got one and one and as we discussed that's two, but we can't write two. So we're going to put one and zero. 
So then I've got one and one plus the one I've carried. Well, now I've got three. So if I've got three, the binary pattern for three is one, 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 two and a one. So I'm going to put one in here and carry my one. And again, I've got three. I've got three again. I've got three again and again. Now I've got one plus one, which is two. So that's naught and carry one. There's nothing in this column, so just the one. So I'm going to end up with one, zero, one, 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 zero. So that's adding together binary numbers. So the, the thing you need to remember is that if you can, can't write anything apart from a zero or a one in these columns. So if you get to two, you've got to then carry one into the next column. So we're carrying it into the twos column in that case. If you get to three, then you're still carrying one into the twos column, but you need one in your column that you're working in to make it three because the pattern for three is one one and the pattern for two is one zero okay so here are some for you to have a go at so have a go at these uh, you can pause the video and have a try at adding these together you can then have a go at converting these as well so pause the video have a go at these and then we'll come back and have a look at how to do them so pause the video now. OK, so hopefully you've had a go at those. So if we look first at adding these these at the end. So I haven't put the, the number positions in. I don't necessarily need to, but always remember that you could you could do so. You know, they are one, two, four, eight, 16, 32. 64 and 128 so you can put those in if you want to but just to add the binary numbers we don't necessarily need to because we can just add our ones and zeros so one and zero is one one and zero is one one and one well that's going to be two but we can't put two but the pattern for two remember is one zero so we're going to put zero and carry one I've got one, naught, and my carried one, which is two again. So it's going to be zero and carry one. Zero, one, one. Yes, again, it's zero and carry one. Now I've got one, one, and one. Well, one, one, and one is three. The binary pattern for three is one, one. So two and a one. So I'm going to write down one and carry one. I've got one and zero and one, which is two. Zero, carry one, and then one. So my final answer, it's going to be one zero one zero 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 one one. So hopefully you got that one right. So then the hot, the slightly more tricky idea of adding together three binary numbers. So this is the most that you'll ever have to do. Really, is adding together three binary numbers. So I'm I'm starting on the right hand side. I've got one and one and one. Well, that's three. And as we know, the binary pattern for three is one one. So we're going to put one and carry one. One zero zero one is two zero carry one one zero zero one again it's two zero carry one zero 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 and the carried one is just the one zero one one well that's two so again zero carry one because remember that the binary pattern for two is one zero 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 and the one well that's just one and then one zero zero again we're just one and zero so our final answer for adding those three numbers together is zero one one zero one zero zero one so that's adding together three numbers so hopefully you did okay with that one so maybe we could think now about converting so we've got a couple of numbers here to convert converting 52 to binary well we need our binary positions so we'll just write those down and on your exam paper it's always best to either write them down on the paper if you can or if you don't have a paper and it's electronic then write them down on a piece of spare paper so we don't make any mistakes so i got 52 in order to do my conversion well there are no 128s in 52 so i can immediately write my zero there same goes for 64 but there is a 32 so if i 
do a subtraction, I'm going to end up with 20 left. So there is a 16, and I can take my 16 away. It leaves me four. Here's my four, I've got nothing else left. So that's my answer. I've converted 52 into binary. So if I do the same thing with 66 over here that you ha hopefully have had a go at. And again, I'm just writing down my positions. I don't want to make a mistake. So I'm going to make sure I've got all of my positions correctly written. And the number this time I'm doing is 66. So I'm going to write that down at the side. So there are no 128s, but there is a 64 this time. So I've got 64. I'm going to take that away. Well, it only leaves me two left. Well, that's actually quite nice and easy for me to do this one because I've got all of these are going to be zeros because none of those fit into two. But I do have a two and that takes me to 66. And that's the answer to converting 66 to binary. Hopefully you got those right. If you didn't set yourself another couple of practices, you can always check back to see if you've done it properly. So you could just add them together. You know, we've got 64 plus 2 is 66. In this case, 32 plus 16 plus 4. So we can do that as an addition if we want. 32 and 16 and 4. 3, 4, 5, 52, we carried the 1, and that just checks for us that we've done it correctly. And there's nothing wrong at all with checking back, reconverting and checking back on your exam when you're doing the exam. So in this one, we're just going to look at the idea of overflow. So there's an overflow error or overflow occurs when there's not enough bits available to represent the number that we want to represent. So if we did the addition that we've got here in binary, 0 and 1 is 1, 0 and 1 is 1. 0 and 1 is 1. 1 and 1, remember, is 0 carry 1 because our pattern for 2 is 1, 0. And then we've got 1, 1 and 1, which is 3. That's 1 and carry 1, because the binary pattern for 3 is 1, 1. 1 and 1, and our carried 1 is 0, carry 1. 1 and our carried 1 is 0, carry 1. And 1 and our carried 1 is 0 and carry 1. So the answer that we've got is now what, 16, 20, 22, 23. Well, 23 is not the correct answer for adding together these two numbers because it can't be because we started off with something in the 128 position here. So an error has occurred and that's the error. We lost that bit off the end. So it's called overflow if you don't have enough bits to represent the number that you want to represent. And you might remember that in eight bits, the biggest number we could represent is 255. So if we get a number that's bigger than 255, we can no longer represent it in eight bits. And so we would get an overflow error. Now, of course, in the real world of computing, we tend to have much larger registers than eight bits. So we can represent much larger numbers. But as far as we're concerned, when we're trying to describe an overflow, it's when we don't have enough bits available to represent the number or the size of the number that we want to represent. So on this video, we want to talk about hex. So hexadecimal. So hexadecimal is a base 16 number system. Computers do not read hex, but humans read it very well. So humans quite like to use hex because it's a shorter notation. And maybe we'll see why that's the case uh, in a while. So we've got base 16. So therefore, we've got all the symbols 0 to 9, which are nice. And they're just 0 to 9 uh, in the same way. So 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. But then we've got some other symbols that we need to make up to 16. So A becomes 10. And we use B for 11 and C for 12, D for 13, E for 14, and finally F 
for 15 because we've now got 16 symbols f being 15 and we've still got zero so zero to nine and a to f so when you're doing a question in the exam i always think it's better to just write down this table like this to say well, i've got a is 10 and b is 11 and i know we could just remember it in our head but actually um it kind of prevents us from making mistakes so i always like to see that written down and i i would do it myself just to remind me what i'm doing so maybe we would do a conversion so perhaps you might get a question which says something like um convert the hex number um f a into binary so into binary we could do this um the way that we could do this is simply just by writing down our positions and each four binary positions represents one character in hex so my character in hex you can represent it by these four binary digits and the reason for that is that we've got 16 different combinations of binary numbers in four bits so if i was to represent a i'm looking up on my table over here a is 10 so i've got one eight and one two and that's 10 so that's my first bit of representing a so then i also want to represent f so i'm going to write down the same numbers eight four two one and f if I look upon my table, it's 15. So to represent that, I need an 8 and a 4 and a 2 and a 1. So my whole number is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0. And that's just representing a number in binary when you've been given it in hexadecimal. So we're just converting from hexadecimal into binary. So here are some hex conversions for you to have a go at. So there are four here for you to have a trial at. So if you pause the video now, then you can have a go at them and then you can start it up again and have a look at, uh, at the answers. So pause the video and have a go at these four conversions. Okay, so hopefully you've had a go at those now. So you'll notice on the right hand side of course i've written down my positions again so i've got a is 10 and b is 11 like this just to remind me of what they are and just to remind you that you can do that in the exam or on some scrap paper or whatever you want to do to help you and to try to prevent you making any errors so the first one a4 remember i'm going to do my numbers one two four eight here so i'm going to convert four first of all which is going to be zero one zero zero because this is the four position i'm going to do the same thing on this side one two four eight and a i'm looking up on my table here is ten so i've got one eight one two and a zero so that would make ten so my whole number converted is one zero one zero zero one zero zero and that's a four so if I move over to this one, which is 9F, then I, it doesn't actually matter which order I do these in. I could do it this way. So if I do the 9 first this time, um, I've got 1, 8 and 1, 1 to make a 9. So 1, 0, 0, 1 is a 9. And then I've got my F on this side, 8, 4, 2, 1. And I need 8 and a 4 and a 2 and a 1 and that's 15 so actually anytime you've got an f as a pattern then you might remember that that is one 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 because it's the biggest number we can put in those four bits i'm moving down to this one i've got d8 and i'm going to do exactly the same thing one two four eight and in this case we've got eight so there's an eight there and the rest of these are going to be zeros i'm going to do the same thing on this side put my numbers down for d d if i look up over here on the table i've written is 13 uh, so i need an eight and a four and a zero and a one eight four and one is 13 so my whole number one one zero one one zero 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 so then i've got a and b 
So I'm going to do exactly the same. B, if I look up, is 11. And that looks like that. An 8 and a 2 and a 1. And A is 10. And so that's an 8 and a 2. So 10101011 is the actual answer to that. So hopefully you got all those uh, all those correct. So on our whole binary number, uh, we'd end up on this one, for example, with 1010 and 1011. So if you needed to convert that into decimal, you could do that just the same way as we did before. 1248, 16. 32, 64, and 128. And then we can just add those together, 128, because I've got one in that column, and a 32, and an eight, and a two and a one. And we converted it just by adding them up. So that is 171 and that would be the way to convert from hex all the way into decimal. Well, hopefully you got those all right. And if you didn't quite get them right, set yourself up a couple more to have a go at. You can always check them. Uh, you can check them by looking at the table that you've got here on the right hand side, which is showing you the numbers. In fact, you could just decide that all of those you could represent in binary if you wanted to. So if you said A was 10 and that the pattern for A was 1010, you could write yourself a whole table like that and then check them out. So this is a little topic that we may not have uh, got to actually. So um, very straightforward. Uh, we're using a code scheme to represent letters. So uh, when the computer, as you know, represents anything, it has to use binary numbers uh, because it can only respond to ons or offs or switches. So we, we looked at that as an idea. So one way to represent text is called ASCII, and that stands for American Standard Code for Information Interchange. You don't need to remember that, but ASCII is the code scheme. What you do need to remember is that it uses seven bits. And if you remember a bit is just one binary digit, so that's a naught or a one. So if you had seven bits, you could have these positions, one, two, four, 8, 16, 32, and 64, because there are seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if we added those up, the maximum number we could have is 127. And if you look at the code chart on the right hand side of here, the biggest number here is 127, and that represents a, a strange little square as the character. Only ones we're really interested in are these ones here which represent letters. So if you look, we've got ASCII 65 is a capital A. And ASCII 66 is actually a capital B. And so if you, for example, got the question, you know, given that ASCII uh, 65 is A, then what would ASCII 68 be? So you only have to think about doing 65, 66, 67, which is going to be a C, and 68, which is going to be a D, because they just follow on numerically. And you can see that on this chart, all of the capital letters are between 65 and 90, with Z being 90. So if you get asked this question or something similar to it, then, you know, if ASCII A is 65, what is ASCII 68 or 69 or 70 or 71? You've only got to count and keep counting up and saying that it represents whichever letter of the alphabet you've arrived at. So that'll probably be enough for you at this stage to know about. So you can see on this chart, there are lots of other symbols that you can use in, in ASCII as well as uppercase letters, there's a whole set of separate character codes for lowercase letters starting here at decimal 97 and going on down to 122. 
So the biggest number we can get in this seven bit code is 127, but we do have zero as well. So we've got 128 options. And the ones we're really interested in are the letter codes.